folks and just a quick one uh, someone actually asked me to do this one so I thought I'd oblige that whole which programming language should you learn first question and then at the end a quick final thought for any of the younger folks out there who are in their teens or early 20s and still contemplating a long-term pathway in this industry anyway my name is Matt core maintainer of Apex I do loads of short and to the point videos regarding all things web development concentrating on PHP and Apex. If that by chance interests you, please make sure to like and subscribe. And before we begin, a huge shout out to DigitalOcean for sponsoring Apex through its open source program. That was simply awesome of you guys. Um, I've been using DigitalOcean myself for years, well before Apex was even a thing, and I couldn't even dream of changing. They are simply the best out there, so if you ever need world-class hosting, make sure to check out DigitalOcean. And just a quick disclaimer before we get going, um, I am the type of person who enjoys learning the hard way because from my experience, it pays dividends. I have no problem at all just jumping into places where I have no business being because in my mind, that's the best way to learn. So with that in mind, um, I know a lot of people out there say that both Node and Python are the best first languages. And please know I am not knocking these languages especially Python. Just look at how much it is used in our daily lives. Plus, I use Python quite a bit and really enjoy the language as well. However, I do have to disagree that those are good first languages. And the reason is, if you think you are going to get by in this industry knowing just one language, then uh, yeah, no, that's not going to happen. So your goal as a new developer is to is to become language agnostic and in order for you to do that you need to get your head wrapped around the fundamental paradigms and principles of solid software development because to be honest once you do and you get your head wrapped around those fundamentals jumping from language to language is relatively easy i mean granted it can get pretty frustrating sitting there having to google how to lowercase a string and you know a new language but hey what can you do so for a language you are looking for various different things you want strongly typed very important good data structures object oriented properties interfaces inheritance so abstract and final classes and methods uh, you want namespaces or something similar to them uh, visibility so public protected private you want some type of metadata makes no difference if it is annotations or attributes and some type of package manager doesn't matter if it is npm composer or cargo they all fundamentally work the same and then plus there's various different paradigms that tend to traverse software languages things such as traits generics the match expression first class functions dependency injection auto loading overriding and things of that nature because the thing is everything i just said there traverses a lot of the different software languages out there so if you can manage to get your head wrapped around this when you inevitably have to jump into a new language you'll be in a much better position to do so and there's lots of really great languages out there to choose from php is a really excellent one the only two caveats with php is there are no generics and the arrays are a bit wonky um, it's kind of like a vector and a hash map had a baby and out popped a php array kind of weird but it is what it is uh, there's the tried and tested Java there is Golang which is excellent there is C++ although it's a bit old C sharp if you're into game development Kotlin and Swift if you're into mobile development scale is another really good one and if you have your heart set on JavaScript may I recommend TypeScript um, I only have minimal experience with TypeScript, but I was really impressed with that language. And I generally disdain anything coming out of Microsoft because, hey, Linux. But I have to give props where props is due. Microsoft did an excellent job on TypeScript. Um, TypeScript is basically JavaScript done right. Yes, it's going to be more difficult to learn than Node. But I can pretty much promise you that if you put in the time and effort necessary to get your head wrapped around TypeScript, once you do, you're going to go look back at some node code and you're going to think to yourself, oh, thank God I took that blind dude's advice on YouTube because I'm in a much stronger position than I would have been if I would have stuck with Node. And that is true because a lot of the things you're going to learn in TypeScript will traverse other languages and put you in a much better position as a developer. 
if you by chance find that list of languages a little overwhelming or a little too complex and you're looking for more of a transitory language just to help get your feet wet as strange as it sounds i can actually recommend solidity uh, just until just recently i was picking up a decent amount of smart contract work and i was once again pleasantly impressed with the language because i just assumed it was going to be some limited scripting language but it's actually quite nice it's strongly typed, it's object oriented has interfaces, abstract classes, visibility, kind of obscure visibility, but visibility nonetheless. But yeah, if you're into the blockchain like me, have been since 2010, then there's absolutely no reason you can't fire up Truffle, a Ganesh client for your own private Ethereum node and start banging out some smart contracts. I mean, it does all these content concepts in a bit more of a simplistic way but they are all there and is definitely a solid step in the right direction again please know i am honestly not trying to knock either node or python in this video that is really not my intention and again i actually really enjoy python and find myself using it quite often and in the same vein i absolutely love rust and find myself using it daily right now and probably will be for quite some time However, I would never recommend that for a first language. That whole borrower owner, owner thing that has going on just really isn't conducive for someone new to the industry. And a quick final thought for any of the younger folks out there. If you're in your teens or early 20s and you're still kind of eyeing this industry and contemplating a pathway forward, that's going to provide you with a good long-term stable career with good pay that you're not going to be made redundant in. Um, First disclaimer, please take everything I say very much with a grain of salt because to be honest, I don't even have a grade 10, let alone a high school diploma and the last time I had a job I was 19 years old and raking rocks out of dirt while landscaping. So there's that. Um, I normally wouldn't share that but yesterday the biologist who I'm currently a personal developer for said due to the results of the work I'm providing it's a complete game changer and it's akin to advancing them from the age of the steam engine to the nuclear reactor. So, gotta admit, feeling pretty good right now. Anyway, younger folks, if I was in your position, I would be looking towards robotics and more specifically robotics in space. You, we already have the NASA Artemis missions we have the Mars rover, we have Elon Musk being Elon Musk, we have a couple of hotels planned to be deployed up in space, and space construction is still not even an industry, but it's about to become one, and it'll probably be huge. So say if you are still in your teens, you're maybe six or seven, ways, six or seven years away from graduating university, although space construction is not an in industry yet, it probably will be by then, and then you can get yourself a nice job at SpaceX or similar, and that is not a job that's gonna be made redundant because that type of industry is gonna require a lot of specialized robotics work. And just a quick afterthought after I made that last segment and mentioned once you get out of university. Please know if you don't have the resources or desire to go to university, by no means is that a deal breaker in this industry, which I'm sure everyone watching this already knows. Um, I'm sure university helps, I'm not knocking it, but technically speaking, everything you need to know to thrive in this industry is available free of charge on the internet. You know, and again, I don't have a grade 10 and here I am the personal developer to a biologist helping him develop out a new data modeling pipeline for DNA analysis in Rust. So, and I'm doing it blind. So this industry has no barriers and it's welcome to any and all. And that's it for this video. If you're by chance still here, thank you very much for your time. I truly appreciate it. If you by chance like this video, please make sure to like and subscribe. And if you're by chance feeling extra generous and don't mind sharing this video around to help get the channel up and running, I would be very grateful. Thanks again for your time. Take care and I will see you in the next video.